Welcome to another video from the Smart Enough Factory. As you know, our, our principle essentially is to look for uh, low cost, low code, and uh, low risk solutions for Industry 4.0. And we've often focused on providing digitalization tools for SMEs, and we've looked at uh, using very simple interfaces like this one, where we can uh, collect analog and digital data from existing equipment. Um, and we do that usually by a Node-RED. Um, other options, of course, for those types of devices are these sort of wise type uh, Advantech devices. But uh, we focused on these XB based devices where we need to make interfaces. Now, of course, we don't necessarily always need to connect to machines uh, via these devices. Uh, we can make use of uh, protocols like Modbus or, or MQTT and in fact in uh, as you're aware they uh, we use MQTT um, in our uh, factory in the box system okay however what I want to talk about today is PLCs now this is going to be I reckon about a three-part video and one of the reasons is that of course uh, the Modbus protocol although we can uh, communicate with it through uh, node red um, you might typically see that more in a, in, a, in a SCADA, a supervisory control and data acquisitions type system. And of course, one of the principles of the Smarter Factory is that we do use a lot of open source products. Um, so in our, in our framework, so looking to extend that, um, we came across this, this product here. Now this, interestingly, looks like a PLC, but it's got way, way more in common with this device here, which is a, uh, an Arduino. And in fact, this, and to call it a PLC, which I might do by mistake, it's actually uh, a controller. And it's based around the Maker or MKR sort of um, uh, uh, MCU that's, uh, um, that's in the uh, Arduino tool, in the Arduino boards. This essentially is made by a company called uh, Fact Engineering. Uh, it's distributed by uh, Automation Direct in the US and uh, other parts of the world. In Australia, it's uh, Direct Automation uh, distribute these as well. Uh, and it consists of the MCU or the, 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 the controller in the center. And on this side, you can fit shields. So there's a, the Arduino MKR shield pins. And in fact, this device on the right, this Ethernet shield, uh, is truly known as a shield and it's, and it's very much like this Ethernet shield on this device here. Uh, and on the other side, uh, via this interface, which is uh, not on the back plane, but on the each individual cards, uh, it's an SPI interface. Well, I should correct myself there, I guess, because SPI stands for Serial Peripheral Interface. So maybe it's just said interface twice, but an interface interface. Well, let's live with that. Um, uh, and it takes their standard or fact automation or automation direct uh, sort of P1000 um, uh, I.O. units. So there's I.O. units on this side, just like you would expect to see on a PLC. And on the right hand side, we have shields and it can be powered by the 24 volt supply here. I've got it just connected up to four buttons uh, on a digital input. Um, the alternatives, of course, uh, small low cost PLCs. This one's, for example, from Highwell. Um, what we have here, maybe I should make sure that stuff on the table isn't neglected. This is a power supply that's uh, that's provided, or you can purchase from uh, from uh, the productivity sort of uh, uh, devices that fits with these. Um, but any any supply will do, of course. Okay. Um, one of the areas that I'm going to look at, or this this video is going to explore, is essentially the framework that we might use to to program this. So. Um, as I say, the Smart Factory, we focus on, uh, on open source products. We've come across um, OpenPLC, uh, which is a, a, essentially a, a, a tool for programming um, PLCs. However, OpenPLC is focusing on the Arduino and um, Raspberry Pi uh, sort of tools, as well as sort of Linux and Windows, I guess. Um, and it uses, a, a, it's, I'll, I'll describe it in more detail, but essentially it is built on top of some pre-existing um, uh, products called Baramiz. Uh, again, it's an open source um, 
uh, interface for PLC programming, and I think that Open PLC has really just provided the tools to to uh, to program the the, uh, the Arduino's and the Pi's. We're going to be looking at a real world example, so I'll just clear these these off. And the real world example is looking at um, looking at at creating a vacuum control system. Now this is a commercial system, a very old system. Uh, the interfaces in here are um, uh, momentary buttons. Um, some of them are used in a latch state, some of them are sort of uh, cycled through. Um, we'll, we'll describe this, uh, this, this, uh, this process in, the, in a future video. But essentially, one of the things in an older system that, uh, that a newer system would, would have is that uh, rather than every single button being uh, accessed um, via an I.O. point, um, we're going to look at using Modbus to reduce the number of wires on that and how we would then create, for example, a SCADA interface for, uh, for this. And we're going to use Fuchsia, which is spelled F-U-X-A uh, and pronounced Fuchsia, I understand, as our SCADA system and uh, instead of node red um, and that's because SCADA often has all the useful little little uh, diagrams and little controllers and, and and is used there to create essentially a a, a mimic of this uh, this interface and and uh, they're typically called hmis so we're going to create a little hmi for this and see what we can do so uh, one of the other things that we will cover uh, is is uh, obviously well not obviously but I'm going to be focusing on ladder logic, and uh, interestingly this is a ladder this is the ladder logic that was provided for uh, this controller, and it's actually descriptive, uh, and and we'll see why I'm saying that later on. It's more for troubleshooting, so we're going to learn or look into converting what is a a descriptive sort of ladder logic into something that's going to going to work for us. And there's a few little wrinkles here. Um, which we'll talk about later, and it's essentially around these different states, which we have pump, standby, cool gas, air, and off. Uh, off is actually an active state, and, and when you're in that active state, what it should do is hold on for a further 10 minutes this, uh, this, this four pump while it's on. It's not an off delay uh, at all, which is interesting, uh, and it's not quite an on delay either. So we'll see about how that, that goes. And of course, we'll be covering that in another video. So thank you. I'm looking forward to doing this, these videos. And um, I'll catch you in the next one.